Okay, um, what we're going to go through is an example of how to um, perform a one sample z interval for p. Okay, so we're going to go through the process, all right, to do this. Okay, so um, if you can check out some other videos of mine on how to construct this confidence interval, um, one sample z confidence interval for p. All right, so what we have is we have an example of to do this, and we're going to just read through this example. So if you want to try this on your own, then we're going to go through the answers in a little bit. You can do that. All right, so for each one, but we're going to do this. And by well, sleep awareness week begins in the spring with the release of the National Sleep Foundation's annual poll of U.S. sleep habits, and the end with the beginning of daylight savings time when most people lose our hour of sleep in the foundation's random sample. All right, so here's a random sample. So right off the bat, we know that n equals 1029 um, U.S. adults. So it's a, of U.S. adults, 48% um, reported they often or always got enough sleep during the last seven days. Okay, so our p hat is going to be 0.48. Okay, now um, the question is, identify the parameter of interest. So what is the parameter? So what is, in this case, um, we have a proportion. So we're looking for the true proportion. So P is going to equal the true proportion. All right. The true proportion of um, U.S. adults. All right. U.S. adults uh, that report they often or always got got enough sleep. All right, enough sleep um, during the last seven nights. Now that is are going to be our um, plan. So we're going to try to find the. So in, if we're doing our process, this is the plan part. So we're going to take p. We're going to state P is the true proportion of U.S. adults that report they often or always got enough sleep during the last seven days. Um, at a, um, let's just go, uh, well, it's going to stay right here. Let's go at 98% level, okay? At 90% confidence level. Confidence level, okay? So we're looking for a 98% confidence level. Um, I got that because I already read through the problem. And I saw that we want to do a 95% confidence interval. So next thing is check if the conditions for constructing a confidence interval for P are met. So what is this? Well, now we're going to state. All right. Oops. Wait. Change this around. This is our state. <laughs> this is our plan. All right. So state. This is our plan. All right. So we state our uh, parameter. We plan our one sample. All right. Z interval interval for p okay so to do that um we first have to know do we have a random sample yes we have a random sample sample of hopefully something in our uh, population of interest sample of uh, 1029 u.s adults all right u.s adults so that's in our sample Awesome. Um, the second thing is we have to make sure we have independence. Okay, so we can use find our standard error. Well, do we have independence? Well, independence, we're going to use the 10% condition. Um, and our 10% condition uh, is the 1,209, uh, 1,029, is that less than 10% of all U.S. adults? Um, I would say that's a pretty good indication of yes. So that's a yes. Um, a third one is we're going to know if this is normal, okay? Because if it's normal, we can use this Z interval um, when we're doing. So the normal, since we're talking about P, we're going to use a large count condition. All right, large count condition. And to figure out the large count condition, since we don't know what the true proportion is, we're just going to use our um, statistic right here. Um, and our point estimate is going to be 0.8. So we're going to take our 1,029, and is that times 0.48, is that going to be um, less than or equal to, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not less than or equal to, greater than or equal to 10, and it is, and is the complement of that, all right, 
So 1 minus 0.48, all right, and is uh, 1,029 times, all right, 0.52. Is that going to be greater than or equal to 10? Well, that is also true. And so since both of these are true, we know that it is also normal. All right, so all the conditions have been met in order to do a one sample Z interval for P. Sweet. Let me just say a little smiley face. You don't have to do that on the AP test, but it's kind of cool. All right, so now we want to find the critical value for 90% confidence interval, then calculate the interval. So our critical value, if you remind, if you remember, so this is going to be the do part. Okay, so this is our do part. So to do the do part, we have to know we're going to take our point estimate. We're going to add and subtract our, all right, margin of error. Now to figure out the margin of error, well, our point estimate is 0.48. All right, for 8 plus or minus a margin of error. Well, our margin of error is going to be our critical value, critical value, um, which is our z value, okay, z score, our z value. And then we're going to multiply that by our standard error, okay, standard error. Now, our standard error is like our standard deviation. And since we're talking about proportions, that's going to equal p hat times 1 minus p hat. And you can find this on your um, AP test divided by n. We can find that right there. Okay, so... The first thing is we got to figure out what our critical value is, and that is our critical value. The critical value at a 98% confidence is what we're looking for um, in our normal, if you kind of think about this, we're going to go whoop, all right, and we're kind of thinking, okay, where is that 98% confidence, okay, 98% confidence right there. Well, to do that, we can take inverse norm, all right, inverse norm. So if you go to your calculators, take inverse norm. Okay, and we're going to go um, 1 minus 0 0.98, and then we're going to divide that by 2, because um, we only can, inverse norm only uses uh, percentiles, and so if we take the percentile, all right, of our inverse norm, and we subtract that, what we'll get is 98, but then this is 2%, but we only really want to have just 1% on both sides, all right? And so when we do this and we punch it in there, we will get a negative answer. Okay, so we should get like negative 2.326. Uh, well, we don't want, we don't need the negative one. We're just going to use the positive portion because we would just want to know that value. But really, we get that one. All right, so we have negative 2.326 and a positive 2.326 because it is um, symmetrical. And so that is our critical value. So our critical value for 98% confidence interval is going to be 2.326. So now, using all that information, we can now construct our, all right, um, confidence interval of 98%. To do that, we're going to take, plug everything in. We have 0.48 plus or minus the 2.326 times the square root of, all right, our p hat, which is 0.48 times, all right, the difference of those two, we found that to be 0.52, and we're going to divide that by our n value, which is 1,029. We put this into our calculator, all right, so I'm just going to go over here, and that's what you want to do, and so we're going to find our margin of error, so I'm just going to find the margin of error, so this right here, my friends, this is our margin of error. Okay, so I'm going to calculate that, and you can calculate that too. So 2.326, all right, times the square root of um, 0.48 times 0.52, all right, divided by 1,029. And if you go onto your calculators and you calculate that, oops, all right, and when you do that, I got a value of, all right, so 0.48 plus and minus 0 0.036, okay? And so we're going to take that value, and to create our confidence interval, we're going to add 0 0.48 plus 0 0.036, and we get a, all right, so the top end, the higher point is 0.516, all right, and our lower end, all right, 0.48 minus 0 0.036, and our lower end is going to be 0.444. So that is our confidence interval. Boom. All right, so that's our do. Now let's interpret what this is. So now we're just going to conclude. Okay. 
state plan do and conclude. And so what do we conclude? Well, what we are, we are 98% confident, all right, that the true proportion, so now this is our parameter, proportion, proportion of U.S. adults, and if we want to copy all that stuff, but I'll just say that, that or uh, adults that report they get enough sleep in the in the last seven days. All right, is all right between all right uh, point. Four 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 and 0.516. So we are 98 confident that the true proportion of U.S. adults report they get enough sleep in the last seven days is between 0.444, or we can say is in the interval, right? Is in the interval right there. Okay. Bada bing, bada boom. And that's it. That's what we just did. Um, an example of going through the process of a one sample, constructing a one sample Z interval for P, our state, our proportion with our confidence level, our plan, um, going going through and setting our conditions, our do, find our critical values and setting up our confidence interval, and then finally our interpreting of our value. All right. Well, I hope this helps you out. We're going to go through another example in just a little bit. But good luck and God bless in the rest of your problems.